The legislative session is in full swing at the state capitol. Joining us now to talk story about that and the other pressing issues facing us here in Hawaii is Governor Josh Green. Aloha and good morning, Governor. Thank you so much for stopping by this morning. Good morning. So I don't know if you got to see the Super Bowl yesterday, but at the coin toss, the Lahaina Luna football team, just a, a tear-jerking moment uh, to see them talk about some of the homes that they lost and some of their loved ones that were lost. Any update on the recovery as well as the housing situation on Maui? Absolutely. So yes, it was touching and we're so proud of, of the young people that kind of weathered this storm. Uh, we have the opportunity now to move thousands and thousands of households over into long-term housing. That's the goal. FEMA is doing it ferociously and we have partners with CNHA and Department of Human Services. So what I'm asking the team to do is to decompress the hotels down to a thousand households by March 1st and then we get the last bit of uh, households over into long-term housing as we approach the summer. We have enough housing almost. I need about 500 more units. A lot of people have asked am I going to do a moratorium on short-term rentals which is super controversial. Of course I will if we don't have enough housing units, but we have made great progress and so we're hopeful that we won't have to do that. Housing is our priority right now and we're already doing the planning on building. When you look at housing across the state, there is a bill in the state legislature right now that's looking at banning foreign entities from owning property here in Hawaii. Uh, the Attorney General has questioned the constitutionality of that. What are your thoughts? Everyone knows it's unconstitutional from the standpoint of what real legislators do. It's popular to talk about that. We can put some restrictions on ownership in the in the state uh, if it's conditional on some work uh, requirements and so on where people are local, especially if they are from the Hawaiian community and DHHL. Those kind of bills get floated because they're very popular to talk about, but the federal constitution doesn't allow us to do that, and that makes it difficult. But I am going to do all that I can to transition short-term rentals to long-term rentals for our local people, and that means taxing the heck, the heck out of them if people aren't owners here and on property. We have 52% of our short-term rentals owned by mainland guys. I want them to divest so that local people can either rent or buy those properties. And another part of the housing crisis, I've spoken to experts at the University of Hawaii, they're housing experts, they say just building more inventory also helps to, to lower the prices. Where are we at in that regard? We're pushing hard. You know, I have us under emergency proclamation and it's necessary. We're authorizing more and more developments. That's key in safe spaces, not uh, in places that are environmentally protected. It's really important. So uh, building is key. We have 89,000 plus short-term rentals that we could convert. 75,000 are illegal. We should convert all the illegal rentals, the sh illegal short-term rentals into housing or all that we can. That would help our people because right now people are gouging others. They're getting 400% uh, of the earnings on short-term rentals, mostly when they're in the illegal kind of space as opposed to just regular rent for local families. So that's really the approach that uh, thoughtful and cogent legislators are taking. You know, I appreciate big ideas, I always have, but we have to do things that are allowed by the Constitution. Now, when we're looking at our homeless population, housing is a big option for them. Uh, you had the Kauhale announcement on Friday in Kaneohe. Can yes. you give us the details on that? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's uh, 34 units, super, super great work by HomeAid by uh, Project Vision. We're gonna announce another one this week over on Middle Street, I believe. We're gonna accelerate the Kauhale projects uh, with all the mayors, especially Mayor Blangiardi, where the largest majority of homeless are here on Oahu. It's important because if people come off the street, they don't suffer and, and die at a much younger age, average age 53, their costs drop really steeply. And we are now uh, amazed that the federal government has finally seen fit to agree that housing is health care. They're now going to allow us to use some Medicaid funds to house people who are homeless. What that means is people who have an average spend of about $80,000 per person per year can drop about three quarters if they have a roof over their head. So Cal Holly will save a ton of money. Philanthropists help us. Microsoft helped us build this last one. We're going to keep announcing them, keep putting homeless individuals into those places because everyone on the street for a period of time ends up having PTSD. You know, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. Many people, of course, wrestle with other mental illness like schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, uh, serious depression uh, disorders, major depression. It's hard to function if people are in that space and then terrible moments occur like we've seen. So I'm keen on doing this for our state. I think we can be the first state to really decrease homelessness with these models. But it's all together. Housing, more units for the middle class, more housing for homeless individuals. This is kind of our uh, mission or um, ideal, which is to care for our people. 
when you talk about housing for our homeless individuals, that's a, a major part of it. But when you talk about those, especially with stuff like paranoid schizophrenia, uh, they don't know they need help, right? And, and so yeah. voluntary commitment to facilities, to medication, to treatment, it, it, a lot of times isn't an option for them. Uh, is there any way, I've talked to psychologists about this, is there any way to get these folks some sort of involuntary care to help them with maybe like a board certification, like you get three psychologists that agreed like this person needs help to, to get them involuntary care? Absolutely. Interestingly, we already have the system in place. It's just very, very hard to execute. It's called ACT treatment or assisted community treatment. So if you see somebody in the street and you're worried about their mental status and they are a danger to themselves or they've got schizophrenia, they can't care for themselves, we can bring them in and, and get them into treatment. However, we need all sorts of extra support. We need more volunteer lawyers. We have a great health leader. That's Chad Koyanagi, who's a psychiatrist, went to Punahou, I think went to Harvard after that. These are leaders that can do this, but you need more and more and more support, which is why we're building out kind of a homeless health system, but we need more beds. That's why at the Hawaii State Hospital, which is almost always filled with people who have methamphetamine addiction and violence, we need to get people off their drugs. We have to decompress the state hospital so people with real mental illness go in there. Not that addiction-driven mental illness isn't real. It's just that the vast majority of people are in those beds with meth addiction, and so we just don't have enough support or space to get people care. So we have to build out these beds. Our Department of Health is doing that with my other leaders. There's a guy named Michael Champion, a psychiatrist on my team that's leading an additional kind of tiger force to do this. But each of these pieces is necessary. Social workers on the street, we're paying their loans back. Kauhale to put people into care. Act treatment to be able to move people off the street if they won't do it. More beds at the state hospital. So if any of these pieces don't get into place at the legislative level or at the administrative level, then we end up in a bottleneck. So that's how I'm approaching it. Yeah, so many different facets to this problem. And finally, real quick, Governor, uh, as a doctor, you got any uh, medications or, or prescriptions for a broken heart for a 49ers fan? Oh, <laughs> my God. I, I'm so sorry. I look. It was, was a good game. I was rooting for the 49ers. I got to respect Mahomes. He was just a better quarterback He's than your good. quarterback, better than my quarterback. Yep. So we are going to have to fight him for years to come. But <laughs> you guys are still great. It was a fun game. Yes. All right, Governor. Thank you so much for joining us you this bet. morning.